Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome you all back uh, to BackstageCon. Uh, I am Balaji Sivasubramanian. I lead the product uh, management for the developer tools at Red Hat. We're excited to be a leading contributor and a big supporter of uh, BackstageCon project. Today, I want to share some of our contributions to help increase backstage adoption uh, in enterprises. So we've been working with a lot of adopters and listening to their feedback around specific challenges they face uh, as they try to increase adoption. We have many efforts going on in, to address these challenges, but today I will just focus on three areas uh, for this talk. One is around enterprise security, other is plugins for enterprises, and then the enterprise orchestration. If you, in case you don't know already, Red Hat maintains all the plugins and all the work we're doing here in open source. So nothing is behind a firewall there. Everything is in open source. Uh, for, for most enterprises, backshift default or rules maintenance for model may not work as it requires sort of rebuilding uh, backstage for RBAC's rule changes. Not exactly a, a scalable way to pro a scalable process for the enterprises. So I would like to introduce the RBAC plugin that is available free of charge. You can configure the RBAC policy through a, a, a simple backstage UI. You can define roles associate users or groups to the roles, and then define permissions for those roles. The plugin is leveraging the backstage permissions framework, so that any, so any plugin using that framework, including the scaffolder or the catalog, can use this plugin to sp specify our back policies. In the next release, we also plan to support conditional policies as well, and that'll be pretty exciting. And this is available for download today. Next, what I'm going to talk about is software supply chain risks. It's one of the biggest challenges in facing development teams. While the notion to shift left is, you know, is in security practices is well understood, it is often difficult to, for developers to implement that in reality. So luckily, we can leverage the backstage uh, software template to embed the best practices to lower the supply chain attacks. So we get a set of templates and the plugins uh, enhancements to address these issues. The templates that you can use, you can get in the URL that is shown there, already integrates with the typical steps to ensure software security, including software SBOM generation, signing, provenance attestation, image scanning, and policy enforcement through the enterprise contract. So this is basically uh, taking um, the ability for you to, uh, developers are able to, to quickly get to deliver software in a secure fashion without having to, for them to go figure it out. So you have enhanced the Tecton and Quay plugins. You can see some of the uh, UIs there. And that's, uh, but we also integrate with more tools in the next um, few months. Another favorite topic of mine is the need for plugin validation for the project. Uh, today, there are a number of challenges in the plugin is, uh, and in the plugin ecosystem. These, these challenges make it harder for the enterprises to adopt, but also, importantly, risk turning off users with broken plugins, as the plugins uh, may not work when you go between one version to another version. At Red Hat, we went ahead and validated 50 plus plugins so far. I know there are 150 plugins, and maybe there are more hidden plugins that's not there. So we would like to understand what plugins you're using. I saw the, the previous presenter talk about a few plugins that they're using, but there are a lot of plugins out there. So we want to really get your full uh, sort of a survey. So this survey, if you click on it, you know, scan it, for example, and we'll share the results back to the community. It will help us to figure out which plugins people really are using, and we want to make sure we validate them. We plan to. Sh we want to also automate the whole process, so we're going to play, uh, you know, try to build the automated tools so that every release the plugin works, and we'll share with the community. Um, and also building on the validated plugins is obviously that we have to also worry about how to discover these plugins within the within the backstage, within the product itself. With the upcoming plugin catalogs, admin can see the installed plugins and install them. Uh, uh, the, either the, uh, they can look at the installed plugins or install any new plugins from the community or validated plugins. They can also disable, enable, or install, maintain, etc. All through it. Obviously, you need the dynamic plugin framework we talked about earlier to be able to uh, do it live from the catalog. But it is definitely something we are working on. The other use case that we hear quite often in the enterprise, the need for sophisticated orchestration of workflows. While the users uh, love the, the self-service capabilities of a software template, you know, you go there, you, you have a happy path to, to go through a workflow, and you want to get something done, great. But that's not always the life works, right? There's a lot of processing involved that requires human intervention, um, uh, such as onboarding, or maybe you need approvals. So we created a new plugin for this purpose called the Orchestrator plugin that is available for you to download. It improves, obviously, upon the software templates that, it, that you already have. 
uh, but it also performs long-running tasks, ability to do conditional branching and parallel execution, handle failures better, ability to do hierarchical workflows. The other big feature is the event-driven where the workflow can stop and wait for something else to happen before it moves on. So in the animation, you can see that we're able to handle errors um, as in the workflow, as well as open up Jira ticket, wait for the Jira ticket to close before we continue with the process. So initial feedback has been great with the customers. We would love to get your feedback as well. The next plug plugin I want to talk about is sort of the new front-end notification plugin that leverages the back backstage notification system that I talked to you earlier. Um, this allows you to notify users. Uh, the plugins can notify the users directly on the backstage UI. Um, it, obviously, it works with the orchestrator plugin I talked about in the previous slide in that it can notify the backstage users if there's any events that are happening. For example, the developer in the, in the previous case was getting notified about the Jira ticket being created. We are waiting on the Jira ticket, so the, the workflow is basically stopped, but you know, it's, that's the process, right? That's the process they have, they have in the company, but at least the developer is kept abreast of what's going on. You can also download this today and try it out. Uh, a quick plug into our commercial product. You know, we have a commercial offering in a fully supported backstage, 24 by 7 supported. It's an on-prem offering. You can deploy to any Kubernetes. Um, you know, we, we, we launched it in the December of uh, last year and uh, already has good traction. Please uh, stop by our booth if you have any questions. With that, that's my talk. And uh, thank you for joining me today. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Happy to take any calls.